What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and today, I mean world. This is an international video. We're looking at the cheapest countries for Americans or really anyone to retire to. Living in the United States can be expensive. For a lot of retirees, it's almost undoable on a fixed income alone. Many retirees have part-time jobs just to make ends meet. They don't have the income for those extra luxuries like, I don't know, not getting up at 6 a.m. to be a Walmart greeter. Spending your golden years squeaking by is not a good time. The average month monthly cost for Americans over the age of 60 is $3,500 a month. That is the average. Please take that into consideration before you comment. Stop typing. Besides all the day-to-day -day expenses, healthcare costs are soaring and they're showing no sign of slowing down. Then when you figure Social Security is looking iffy at best lately, starts making living elsewhere look more attractive every single day. What are retirees looking for? They're looking for a low cost of living and safety. Doesn't matter how cheap it is, if there's a good chance you're going to be killed, right? All right, so let's take a look and see who's got safety and a low cost of living. Number 10, Uruguay. Living in Uruguay is not for the conservative types. This South American country has laws that would make you think that the entire government is run by a bunch of people from Portland, Oregon. It has a functional political system with very little corruption, highly educated population, and progressive LGBTQ laws. Marijuana is legal to grow, possess for personal use, and the public transit is solid in the capital city of Montevideo. You really won't need a car here. The wine and soccer always going on here. The weather is nice with a warm temperate climate, and it never Never gets below freezing during the winter, ever. Uruguay has a stable economy and almost no inequality or violent crime. This is like a hippie town. It's like one giant love fest where everyone's equal and happy and they all love each other. Uruguay is considered one of the happiest countries and it has a low cost of living. I wonder if those two have anything to do with each other. You can also own a really nice apartment in the capital city for under 175000 And if you go outside the capital cities or any of the few cities they have into the, you know, smaller towns, you can get a nice nice house with some property for under $100,000. Number nine, Latvia. Latvia is in Northern Europe between Estonia and Lithuania with Russia and Belarus to the east. It was part of the Soviet Union until the Republic of Latvia declared full independence on August 21st, 1991, while the Russians were dealing with a failed assassination and coup attempt. It was like, hey, look, they're distracted. Let's sneak out. Since its independence, Latvia has been referred to as one of the Baltic states with Estonia and Lithuania. Riga is the capital city and almost half the country lives in Riga. Now here's the deal about this country. It gets cold, but they have great beer, and it's also dirt cheap. As an example, a nice two-bedroom apartment in Riga will be in the neighborhood of $400 a month. Now, if you want to go top shelf in the city center, you're looking at $1,200 to $2,000, and that's like doorman elevator attendant stuff. You know the places that run about eight to 20000 in New York City? Yeah. Utilities are also dirt cheap. They'll run you about $65 a month. That's during the summer months. That we're talking water, gas, electric, all for $65. Bucks. During the winter, probably closer to 110 but still that's all three that's dirt cheap and here's the best part they don't hate americans so that's good right now in riga they figure there's about 1200 americans living there Number eight, France. First things first, France is so much more than Paris. Paris is like New York City. It costs about 10 times more to live there than the rest of the country. So let's just take them out of the equation. Why would you want to move here? Well, first of all, it's France. If you like art, history, wine, people, cheese, and bragging to your friends that you live in France, then it's the place for you. If you have to work in your retirement, having a job isn't terrible here. You get five weeks of paid vacation, that's standard. Another thing that's standard, 35 hour work weeks. None of this 40 to 60 hour work Work weeks like we work here in the United States. Outside of Paris, like I said, rent is pretty cheap. For a three-bedroom house that looks like something out of a romantic comedy starring Hugh Grant, will run you between $700 and $1,000. And utilities will run maybe $110 a month for all three during the summer and about $160 during the winter. Like I said, for all three. I think I pay $110 just for my water in the house I live in right now. The downside of living in France is this. You might want to bring a friend. The French don't dig Americans too much, and you'll end a lot of your conversations with, screw you too, Pierre.
Number 7. Slovenia Slovenia is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It is bordered by Italy to the west, Austria to the north, Hungary to the northeast, Croatia to the southeast, and the Adriatic Sea to the southwest. This is also Melania Trump's homeland. It's also the homeland of a man named Lou whose wife's been missing for 20 years. If anyone asks him where she is, he says she just ran to the store and she'll be back 20 minutes. And then he giggles. See what happens when you fall into that Google hole of research? You learn things you don't need to know. Side note, Lou's been known to answer the door wearing lipstick. Damn you, Google. Damn you. Slovenia is gorgeous, friendly, and cheap. If you like hiking, walking near a lake, mountain biking, skiing, or just the outdoors in general, this is a place you might want to do some research on. According to the U.S. News World Report, a couple that retires to the resort town of Bled, Slovenia, will have a monthly budget of around $1,200. That covers everything. That's what you need to come up with every month to live. $1,200. Well, $1,255 to be exact. That's not bad. And it's beautiful. It's like a resort town. It's a oh, lake skiing. It's amazing. The major cities aren't anything special in Slovenia, but the small cities and towns dotted around the countryside are amazing. Look into those if you want to jump ship. Number six, Malaysia. Living in Malaysia is beautiful and affordable. Malaysia always reminds me of malaria. I almost say it every single time. Anyway, a couple can live here comfortably in Penyang with ocean and mountain views for roughly $1,900 a month. That is rent on a two bedroom apartment included in that number. The cost of living here is about half that of the US average. Go out to dinner and have a couple beers. You're looking at seven bucks. That's with tip. This one has gotten popular in the last few years, but it's still cheap, which is kind of weird. Normally when it starts getting popular, the prices go up. Now, a lot of Americans, Canadians, and Australians are living here now. I read one report that said making $26,000 a year is like making $60,000 in the U.S. If you want to swim in the warm, clear ocean water, golf, hike the slopes of Penyang Hill, or just sit and enjoy the sun, you can do that just about year-round. The weather is nearly perfect, you know, with rain and the occasional tropical storm, you know? Those things happen. But most of the year is like swimming weather. This is not a bad choice right here, especially as cheap as it is. Man. Number five, Spain. Spain, like France, comes with a disclaimer. Barcelona and Madrid don't count in what I'm about to tell you, but it is my understanding that if you want to enjoy and fall in love with Spain, never go to those two cities unless it's for like a quick visit. Spain has some of the highest standards of living in the European Union. They don't have many rundown places. Now, they have some, and I get it, but compared to other countries, not so much. When you start looking at the beaches, countryside food, wine, yeah, you could do so much worse with your retirement money. All that, a low cost of living, a state government, relative safety, what's not to love. A couple can live comfortably for about $2,500 a month in most areas of Spain. Here's the other cool thing. Spain has a golden visa program, kind of like that golden ticket from Willy Wonka, but you don't get chocolate, you get to stay in the country. The program makes residency permits easier to obtain for those who spend at least $600,000 on property in Spain. So that's kind of cool. Sure, you don't get to see Oompa Loompas and all that, but you get to live in Spain. Number four, the Czech Republic. If you like meat, beer, and don't want to pay too much for it, buy a warm jacket and move to the Czech Republic. You might want to brush up on your Slavic language, though. Not too many of the locals speak English. Prague became a hot spot over 10 years ago. A new guy that lived there back in 2008, 2009, he left because of the recession, said he was paying like $140, $150 for a one-bedroom apartment in downtown Prague. He said once everyone started moving there, the rents tripled, so he moved out. These days, it sits around $600 a month outside of downtown Prague. Downtown, it's closer to 2000 so don't live there it's not worth it the food is still really cheap and utilities will cost you about half of what they cost here in the states on average Prague may be growing a little bit expensive but it's still a ways off from being considered an expensive place to live Czech Republic's a beautiful place the countryside is amazing if you go outside of Prague like what we would consider the suburbs or small town a there's a lot of angry older people there that scream at you if you drive too fast but the home prices and rent drop drastically Number three, Vietnam. Almost 50 years after the Vietnam War ended, Americans again are living in Vietnam. Sure, this time they're wearing sunscreen and carrying canes instead of M16s, and this time they're blowing up the economy instead of their huts. So it's a better relationship this time, I think. Vietnam has become the new Florida. You can live pretty good for under $2,000 a month. That's the house payment, food, someone to cook the food, someone to clean up after you've eaten, and maybe even kill giant insects that made it inside your home. That happens a lot there. I just hope those old dudes leave the Speedos in Florida. 
Nobody wants to see that. I don't care if it's comfortable and legal. It shouldn't be. Stop it. Number two, Peru. Nobody ever thinks about Peru unless you're helping a seventh grader with their homework or you change the channel to Discovery Channel and they're showing that same documentary about the road of death. You know, that road that's dirt road in the mountains. It's like got like 500 foot drops and no guardrails. I think I've watched that 15 times. Anyway, the capital city of Lima can get expensive, but the rest of Peru is what dreams are made of. If you show up in some of these towns and buy something that doesn't include an exchange of livestock, they'll think you're rich. If you own a wallet, they'll think you're a celebrity. Untouched coastline, mountains, Machu Picchu, there is plenty to do in Peru. That kind of rhymes. That could be their new tourist slogan. Something to do in Peru. I gotta call them. Anyway, not like they answer my calls. A couple could easily live on a budget of less than $2,000 a month in most of the areas of the country. Some areas you could live on $1,000 easily. That includes the feeding of the llamas that you may acquire along the way. And number one. Thailand. Everybody knows Thailand has a low cost of living. Spend any time on YouTube and I'm sure you'll come across far too many videos about Bangkok, Thailand and other videos about how cheap Thailand is. Most of the videos about Bangkok have blurred out footage. If I were ever to go out in Bangkok, which I never have, I'd probably come home and take a bath and hand sanitizer. Even though the cost of living has gone up in recent years, it's still considered dirt cheap by American standards. The trick is, forget Bangkok exists. Head north to Chiang Mai. For $400 a month, you could rent a two bedroom bungalow with a garden and live happily ever after. Food's cheap there. You can eat for like $4. If you need a house with a private swimming pool, that'll set you back about 900 bucks a month. There's a large British, American, and Australian community here, so you won't feel totally out of place. You could go out here on a Saturday night with friends and 20 bucks and come home with money left over. More and more retired people from the United States are calling Chiang Mai their home. It's a little overcrowded, but it's still a decent city. All right, so that's my video. I hope you guys got some information you may have been looking for out of this one. Uh, I'd suggest if this is something you're looking into, definitely research these places. I left out a couple of them like Mexico and Colombia and other ones that are probably even more affordable, but they've just got some danger issues that I just excluded them from this. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. Subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.